Greetings from Life and Life Ministries. I am Reverend Michelle Young, and here we are meeting again. And I want to encourage you all to those of you who did not join us before. I want you to know that the previous messages are parts one and two. We are dealing with unforgiveness. We are dealing with bitterness. We are dealing with the bait of offense that exists in the body of Christ. And Jesus Christ is returning for a church that is unspotted and unwrinkled. And saints, the word of God says, if we do not forgive, we will not be forgiven. And a lot of times we struggle with the area of offense. And what we are not understanding is that when you remain offended for a long period of time, it forms bitterness. And I've been talking to you about the different pieces of what we call armor of bitterness, which is unforgiveness, resentment, retaliation, anger and wrath, hatred, violence, and murder. And I want to give credit to Dr. Liz Primus for this material in Health and Freedom, a biblical study guide, and I'm sharing this with you because a lot of times as saints in our families and in the church, division and confusion results in offense and bitterness. And we say that we forgive from the heart, but we don't even understand that there are other demonic spirits that affect us, that make it even more challenging for us to be totally set free if we are not aware of the various areas that we need to look at. And I've dealt with some and I'm going to continue to deal now and make reference to anger and wrath, which is the fourth piece of the armor of bitterness. Anger and wrath takes us deeper into the spirit of bitterness. Unforgiveness, resentment, and retaliation, as we spoke about, that can be hidden by someone who is deceptive. You know, if someone has unforgiveness in them or resentment or even retaliation, you mightn't see that. That could remain hidden. You, and, and you could even try to cover it up. But at the end of the day, anger and wrath cannot hide. Remember Moses we made reference to Moses and I encourage you to go and read Exodus 2, 1 to 15 or Numbers 27 to 12. Moses was plagued with an anger problem even down to the end when he did not speak to the rock. He hit the rock twice when the Lord told him to speak to the rock to get water for the Israelites and that cost him not being able to enter the promised land. Saints, I want you to understand here that Anger and wrath shows itself in the physical body. Um, you might tense, get tense. Your eyes show it, your face show it. And so you can't hide it. Now there is passive anger, but eventually, even with passive anger, you begin to see symptoms of it. So I want you to understand here that anger and wrath is the root of of many families that split division and confusion in the church body, relationships, divorce, relationship problems, anger and wrath is the cause. And I need you to understand that you have authority over these spirits that come to cause us to be in bondage. And you need to be able to say, I break agreement with anger and wrath. I renounce, I repent. And, 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 and it's all part of forgiving. It's all part of understanding that when you tell somebody, you teach somebody to forgive, they must also deal with some of these other spirits that operate as a cluster. And we call it the armor of bitterness. I want you to know that when anger and wrath is not dealt with, when unforgiveness is not dealt with, resentment is not dealt with, retaliation is not dealt with, hatred begins to form. And anger and wrath are set and ready and hatred comes and partners with them. And it gets really 
awful. And there are children that say, I hate my parents. How can a child hate their parent? How can something like that begin to fester in, 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 in a family member? How can husbands and wives get to the place where they hate each other, relatives? And in the body of Christ, God forbid that you begin to form hatred towards somebody because you cannot possibly be worshiping on a Sunday and feel hatred. But many of us, we feel unforgiveness. We feel offended. And so we say, no, I don't hate, but you're an offense. And you've got to deal with it. Those are them deep and hidden things that must be rooted out. Jesus is returning for church that is unspotted and unwrinkled. And these are spots, wrinkles, wickedness. I would call offense wickedness we cannot stay in offense we may mess up we may even hurt people and sometimes we don't even have the opportunity to go back and say you know i would do things differently you have to go to god and pour your heart out to god but you have to deal with it and if someone has done the same to us we must sometimes you can't go to the person but you can go to god but if you can go to the person especially if it's somebody in the body of christ or in your family you need to go to them and i want you to understand that what hatred says is like you know what i am on this planet and there's not enough room for you and me so somebody has to move. Somebody has to move. Somebody road rage. That's what that is. And and it leads to us beginning to, to, to want to hurt the person. And, and sometimes you can experience even self-hatred. And I want to say to a lot of you who no one said to you, you must repent and renounce self-hatred. There's a lot of cutting going on in the schools today where because of deep um, rejection and, and deep feelings of loathing, there's self-hatred, and, and sometimes that will result in, in youngsters cutting themselves because they feel like they're so evil and they just want the evil to, to, to bleed out of them. And that's a whole other topic. But I want to say to you here that hatred has no place in the child of god but here's what i want to tell you many people who begin to hate don't plan to hate it becomes hatred it's a demonic spirit and it builds and it grows in intensity and then it leads to violence and anyone that tells you that they have been violent with somebody else will tell you that there were these feelings before of unforgiveness, resentment, and retaliation. I'm going to do something to you, or I'm not going to do something to you. If you if you ask me for something, I'm not going to do it. I'm going to retaliate by refusing to do it. All these things. And here's violence. And there's also self-violence. And I gave you an idea. I said, I said, the, the cutting, that's an example. And I want to say to youngsters listening, this is not something that you ought to be doing. You need to get help for it. And even binging and purging and all these things, anorexia, excessive body piercing, tattooing. Um, and some of us in the body of Christ, we tattooed before and didn't know, but we need to understand now that tattooing is not biblical. You are piercing your body. I'm not going to go into it, but some of you are gasping right now and you're probably, you're disagreeing. You could disagree all you want. I'm going to tell you one day I'll teach on it. Tattooing is not biblical and you ought not to tattoo your body. But in the mighty name of Jesus, this self-violence is what the enemy brings. But in the mighty name of Jesus, we are coming up against it because you cannot overcome what you're not willing to confront. And of course, violence goes on to murder. And the spirit of murder begins in the heart. And it could even be with a tongue. Proverbs 18, 21. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. And they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. We can destroy someone's life with our words and with gossip and slander. And I have given you the whole list of those demonic spirits that need to be removed. If we really want to deal with bitterness in our life. Saints, I want to say to you. We are Life in Life Ministries, 355-5090-225-6055. We are at 45 Anna Street, Woodbrook. We meet every Sunday at 4 p.m. We're inviting you to come till 6 30 p.m we also tarry all day with the lord on a friday from 10 a.m to 7 p.m you can come at any time we worship him we repent we we ask the lord to come and purge us of the things that are not of him his presence comes we meet for open air prayer meeting on a tuesday at 4 p.m and and bible study at 6 p.m so i'm coming back here now to to, to say to you 
that as the body of Christ, we have no business leaving bitterness in us. And if there is bitterness, it can cause physical diseases. And many times those who have studied it have said, the root of cancer is bitterness and unforgiveness. And there is a whole build up and it goes to resentment, retaliation, anger and wrath, hatred, violence and murder. And I am sounding like I'm repeating myself, but saints, there's so much crime in this country. Where do you think this crime, the root of murders, where do you think this has come from? I'm speaking of it has started with unforgiveness, whether it is something that has happened in the home with a child growing up and things begin to build. We did not reach to be like the, 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 uh, uh, a country where the crime uh, murders are so high if we have been dealing with unforgiveness and you'll say well no that's the unsaved but let me say this the church of jesus christ is responsible for the condition of this country trinidad and tobago the church of jesus christ it is a reflection of what's going on in the body of christ and there's some of you will not like to hear this but the word of god says if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves seek my face pray and turn from their wicked ways and the part that many of us have not been doing is turning from our wicked ways so that God will hear from heaven and heal our land and I just want to pray for you right now all those who are listening and father in the mighty name of Jesus my father I ask that you send a fire of God upon the airwaves right now into the homes the blood of Jesus begin to saturate the homes and the people listening right now in the mighty name of Jesus I take a authority over all spirits of offense in the mighty name of Jesus my God I ask that the break anointing begin to break those yokes right now of bitterness of offense of unforgiveness of hatred of anger of violence of resentment my God father I come against all spirits of murder in this country I take authority against I come against those strongholds of murder in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we're in the church of Jesus Christ. We've been using our tongue to murder the reputation of people where we've been hurt and we've not dealt with it the correct way and we continue to talk about it and talk against people. My God, I cancel the agenda of Satan against the church of Jesus Christ where murder in the church is concerned. My Father, I ask you, O oh God, to set the people free free. Father, I ask you to go deep in the mighty name of Jesus and begin, oh God, to break down those strongholds of unforgiveness. Break down those strongholds of resentment. Break down those strongholds of retaliation. Break down those strongholds of anger. Break down those strongholds of wrath. Break down those strongholds of violence. Break down those strongholds of hatred. Break down those strongholds of murder in the mighty name of Jesus. Jesus, and I command those spirits to begin to leave and go to the dry places. Spirits of violence in this country, I command you to leave and go to the dry places. Spirits of murder, spirits of hatred in the mighty name of Jesus, leave and go to the dry places right now. My Father, I take authority over everything that has been sent against this country. I come against my father, the marine kingdom that has been spewing out, oh God, the division and the confusion among the people, among other things, Father, I come against in the mighty name of Jesus, my father, the agenda of Satan to cause hatred in this country, my father, break the strongholds, my father, cause the church to rise up, the church to rise up in power and authority against strongholds of violence and murder. My father, I speak God's life, father, into the life of the church in Jesus' mighty name. God bless you. Uh -huh.